Okay, so today we're taking a look at one of my older photos. This is from July of this year, so it's not ancient or anything, but what's interesting about this is at the time I was playing with the 100 to 400 um, GM Sony lens with a uh, 1.4x teleconverter on. So what makes it so interesting and um, versatile is that it has an incredibly short minimum focusing distance um, compared to its, uh, you know, focal length. When you have things like the 600 millimeter or once you put the teleconverter on the 840, I mean, you have to be 15 feet away at least. I believe with this, I, I, I'd have to look at the lens itself, but it's closer to three or four feet. So you can get very close pseudo macro stuff w without much trouble. And you don't have to be anywhere near as close to get the macro effect as if you were using, you know, a 90 or 110 or a 50 um, dedicated macro lens. So it's a little bit of a workaround. It also allows you to have um, a macro effect in the field with just one lens or two lenses, maybe if you're primarily running the long lens and you're wandering along, you say, oh, geez, this looks interesting. I want to get a closer shot of that. And what I mean by this is, um, it's a little fuzzy here. It's a little bit off, but if you just cropped to there, okay, we could do a whole lot with this. So let's see what else we have to play with. Okay, so there's a little bit of motion blur, but the eye itself, it's really well exposed overall. Okay, there we go. That's getting closer. All right, so that's obviously the one as far as potential okay and this is nice as well so it really has and i wish it was facing slightly more towards us but that's fine all right so let's see if we can find one that really looks fun to um develop oh that's nice i like that That's good too. And that's barely cropped. In fact, it isn't cropped yet. So, um, we'd have to do a lot of white balance work on this, but the fundamental focal point, the, 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 the subject is looking really good there. So let's play with this for a bit. Let's see if a crop helps us or hurts us just to give that extra not illusion, well, I guess illusion, of truly macroness. All right, so that's, I mean, these are honeybees, so these are tiny little creatures. Um, it's not bad for handheld, you know, with what would assume, you know, is a long distance lens. So, yeah, in any case. So, well, it looks like I had some editing on here. Let's see. Shadows recover. Eh. Okay, well. I'll just get rid of that. Don't know what exactly I was doing there at the time, but that's fine. I'll close down the uh, the viewer as well. Oh, not, not the viewer, the browser. We want the viewer. There we go. Okay. So, first off, threshold. We have to get... Um, we have to get our white balance figured out. So to do that, I'm going to put in a new field adjustment layer. And we're literally just going to play with um, this. See if we can get... Okay, so now that's too yellow. Immediately, that's going to be way too yellow. Yeah. And that's definitely going to be too yellow. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to play with this ourselves. And... The threshold concept is going to be moving towards the magenta to get to get rid of this bluey green or the feeling of blue green. Okay, so we're just going to go up until it feels 
closer to reality, and that's getting there. Alright, so at 14.3, we've fussed with that to the point where it feels pretty good. Okay, so then we're going to go into our actual temperature instead of the tint, and we'll just go up bit by bit until the yellow is balancing out again. And this was obviously a bright, sunny day, midday, high contrast. So it's a warm time out. It's July in the Northeast. Um, it's humid. It's So it's got to have that feel. Now, with all this, we've nuked a bit of our greens, but that's fine. We can go back and uh, fix that. All right, so I'm content with that. Let's see. And right about, let's just leave it right at about 4,000. Or directly at 4,000. Okay, so we're gonna rename that to white balance. Okay, so that we know that that's what we're fooling around with on that layer. All right, so now this one, let's see what it looks like with the radial. Um, here we go. Now we have to choose, uh, obviously this bird right you know, bird, this bee right here is the focal point. So let's see. And again, I make my radials very asymmetrical and um, huge so that the fall off is very gradual and it's not this hard, you know, vignette ring that's just perfectly around it. So. Let's see, um, okay, so then I want to reduce the brightness. Okay, that's, yeah, there we go. And that's recovered a lot of our green as well that we were losing before. So, let me see, and it looks like we did do our levels as well, so that's good. All right, so now things seem a little, little saturated to me, so we can reduce the saturation. We're currently at zero, so. All right, there we go. So we'll put it at negative 10. And let's go back to our radio. Turn down the brightness even more. Okay, good. I like that. So now, uh, do, 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 what would we want to do? Let's see what happens when we... Oh, I, I, Obviously, I haven't edited this fully, but let's see what happens when we um, dodge the eye a little bit. I've switched over to the stylus. Okay, flow. Is that better or worse? We'll be able to see in a second. All right, so... I actually like it the, without it, so we'll clear that. Now, is there any place that really... Let's see. Could use a little touch-up. Let's see. some texturing, or not texturing, but, uh, this creates a 3D depth quality while remaining fairly subtle, so get a little farther glimpse into, um, you can accentuate the shape even though it's flat. So like up here, it's, you know, okay. But if we do that a couple times, and it's very subtle, but that then 
accentuates that there is I don't know it's just a three dimensionality to it, it and, and and you just have to kind of this is the really painterish painterly side of things right here at least for me I think we do a little bit here let me steam them okay obviously we gotta get some of that erased show the mask off that's looking pretty good it looks like we've added quite a bit of depth there which you can see once it's turned on and off with it off and then with it on so it just is highlighting some important spots let's see our exposure warning okay so it's a little dark that's fine that's fine that's fine okay so Let's see if we can do something with a brush here, make it much bigger. Very low flow, hardness, okay. So what we're going to want to do is tune down the brightness even more up here. See if we can do that without having too much of an impact on it looking weird. Okay, so then, as you do that, you gotta do around too, so it kind of blends in. All right, like that. Okay, so this has got a real intense summer vibe to it now. All right, let's see how we do with playing around with the colors. Fill mask, and we'll slide down to our color picker, color editor our picker now we want to expand this to include all the greens and a bunch of the blue tones and then we'll just move it over so we're affecting as little of the yellow as we can and let's see one way versus the other okay so that makes it really yellow that makes it really blue all right so what we're going to want it's a little more foresty green, so we need to move it to the right to add a little more yellow in specifically to the greens. And we're going to up our saturation of our green like just two points, which is almost nothing, but we can see. Let's see now. So hold option, click. It's subtle, but it's there. All right, and then we can also do this. Just reduce the lightness as well. So we'll do negative 15. Okay. So that looks a whole lot more like it should. And then we'll finally do a master color balance, which is probably going to end up being somewhere in the reds, pinks. Orange, you know, let's see about that once we reduce it down. Okay. Let's see if that's done anything at all. Yeah, it has. I like that. Okay. So, now the next step is to open up our browser again and then we're going to edit with Photoshop 
and I realize we've just spent all this time and energy getting this to look a certain way and I think it looks really quite good but now what we do what I do anyway is I make a duplicate layer and then I play around with their auto adjustments see now I would never ever do that so we'll just undo that immediately see how they do on the contrast okay so that bumps it up a little and I do it here with the contrast especially instead of in C1 because I find that Adobe just does a better job with it and then we'll try the color but that's it's mm, too warm okay so then we merge that down and we duplicate it again and as we can see we've got all this little bit of noise and things like that and things could be a little sharper and whatnot and to do that we go to filter topaz labs denoise i'll bring this up and it'll process for a second it's generally quite quick and then you can see the before and after so we've got i mean it's it doesn't look bad you could leave it but this really as a finished product considerably so that's recalculating and you can see it single view before and after so there's before after it just turns this into glass it sharpens up some of this stuff it has a little bit of you know sharpening and output sharpening for the screen so we'll apply that it'll save it then we will merge down again and just hit save and now that we've hit save we can go back to capture one it will have saved this with the adjustments we made and there we go that's the final photo all right well i appreciate you watching and uh hope you enjoyed thank you so much